So yes, both full time and distance are allowed to join any session and whenever they are free, they can join in as well as I'll be posting any videos that are recorded or pre-recorded in case of a clash or some other commitment elsewhere. So do we have any questions concerning the schedule so far? Any questions? None for me. Madam, mm -hmm. um, sorry for this. Those who are doing science lab, they are not doing this program. Oh, they are so not? Given us, they are not, they are only doing ICT 261. Oh. But are they, have they attended this class? Are they part of the, the students that are inside the, the Zoom lecture right now? Yes, some are there. No, they are welcome, sir. <laughs> For this introduction, at least. Even the further, okay, okay. further meetings, you are more than welcome, in case you are bored. But, okay. <laughs> but they don't count to your other CAs, unfortunately. But they are more than welcome to join. Okay. So how many ICT courses are Science Lab taking? Uh, only one. Okay, so the rest are science lab courses only, the other four? Yes. Okay. So since there are no questions, I believe only Madam Hope hasn't seen the rest of the, the course outline, but for the rest, I'm sure you know what follows afterwards. So under textbooks and notes, we have the lecture slides that will be posted on Moodle and will be made available on Moodle either before the lecture happens or once the lecture is conducted. If there are situations where you want to read ahead, you can simply write uh, an announcement in the course forum requesting for future lecture slides in advance. That is also okay. The same goes for 261. Now under textbooks, I have only prescribed one because I believe this one has 99% of the information that you need. But if you feel this one book is not enough, I can look for more material that you can go through. But this one is a very, very big book. It's over a thousand pages and really, really introduces the concept of database systems very well. So I feel like this one is adequate enough. Then we have Moodle which is our learning management system. So all the lectures and tutors uh, for this specific course may be consulted through email or phone number, or you can simply uh, post questions in the announcement group, which I've highlighted may benefit other students. So we shall quickly go through the announcement stuff as well. So ideally with Moodle, you must have paid your school fees uh, above the threshold, which I believe is 50%, and also have all your courses approved for you to see the courses. So if you haven't had your courses approved, you won't be able to see the course content for databases for now. So just simply have everything approved and you'll be able to see. Just like I mentioned in the other course, you should always consult Moodle daily, periodically, so that you'll be able to see any updates that are made. I'll be constantly putting information on Moodle. Sometimes if I find a video on YouTube that might be helpful concerning a specific topic, I will post it to Moodle. So simply check Moodle for any updates that are given. So lectures will be held via Zoom or Google Meetings. And lectures are on Tuesdays and Thursdays for now during this residential period. Then when full time comes through, the proposed dates are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and then they need Friday for labs. And of course, those lectures will be on Zoom, which are all invited to attend. And when we look at the course assessment section, we have the CA out of 40 and the 60. 
For now, the CA is divided into four. Each has been given 10 marks. So I'm being given a warning to say that Zoom will cut off in 10 minutes. So once it cuts off, just simply rejoin the meeting. We shall carry on with the same meeting ID and password. So that's the CA. So the tests, again, will run on Saturdays for 24 hours on the 17th and 14, 17th October and 14th November. There will be two hour, there'll be open book for 24 hours, meaning you can consult your lecture slides and Google, but not each other. I forgot to highlight that in the other class, but you can't consult each other. And this is why you are being asked to sign the plagiarism form so that you understand that when grades are given, if work is too similar without proper accreditation, you might lose marks. So please try to do your work on your own. So if there are people found copying, the person who copied gets zero and the person who gave the friend will also be given zero. So even as you are sharing work, I advise that you don't share work that you have submitted. I would, I would rather you don't discuss any of the assessments on a one-to-one -one basis, but rather give resources to your fellow classmates because your numbers are very, very small. It's very easy to pick out when people are copying. So under the assignments, you have three assignments for this course and no, anything late will not be marked. You have two quizzes. Most likely they'll run on Saturdays or Fridays, depending on what happens, but always consult Moodle and there'll be an announcement that will be made prior. Labs will be submitted again through Moodle and no late submissions will be marked. It's unlikely that there will be defense, but in the situ in cases where defending is necessary, uh, the tutor or myself will contact the student so that we can hold a live Zoom meeting so that the student can defend the work. The final exam will be done in December. In December. Hmm. The final exam will be done in December and the timetable will be published by academic office. In the case where we will have um, the online exams, it will be a 24 hour open book or in the case where things are back to normal, it will be a closed book for three hours. Then I have provided notes in terms of attendance, exemptions and extensions of practical work. So this document is available on Moodle. I'll advise everyone to go through and read, including the section on plagiarism. I've already quickly highlighted on this, but try as much as possible to copy from your brain. But also another note, um, when it comes to crediting work, um, though this will be explained when we start, con when I conduct the lab session tomorrow, um, in order to avoid plagiarism, you can also go about it by ensuring that you have properly cited any work that you might have used or copied from elsewhere. And uh, how to avoid plagiarism will be discussed tomorrow during the lab session or rather th Thursday for this course. Then in terms of information, dissemination and communication, especially communication, Whenever there's any information that needs to be sent out, I'll always post it on Moodle, send individual messages on Moodle. Uh, you can have extensions based on medical grounds and other serious issues such as funerals or anything else that you feel will hinder you to complete any assigned work on time. You will need to contact me or the tutor in time. You have our phone numbers and but for such things, there are records kept, so I would rather they are sent via email. But so just simply read through this section, but basically that's what all this is trying to do. Then we have the syllabus itself. So for this course, we have a total of 
11 major topics that we are going to cover. So most of them will either be covered through the lab the assignments as well as via the instruction lectures as well. So we'll start with basic introduction to data systems. We'll look at the history, the location, the types, and so on and so forth. We'll look at an overview of database management and why we even have database management systems to begin with. Then we'll look at database methodologies. This is where we are looking at looking at converting real world scenarios from text to an actual ERD and finally a relational model and finally translating that to our database management systems. Then we have introduction to data models and why we have them all the way until we look at description of files, records, and fields, and what all these three mean and how well they go together in order to achieve a sufficient and adequate database management system. So generally, this is the course overview. So if there are questions, I'll pause here for now so that I can invite questions from the, the group. Do we have questions? No, my God. All right, so if there are no questions, we shall quickly go to Moodle. So on Moodle, we have the course section ICT 271, which is databases. And I've already added a few a few details and certain files on the the website already, or rather not Moodle itself. So the first thing I want to discuss is the announcements tab or announcements forum. So this simply acts as a WhatsApp chat group. So here you would need to add a topic as well as something that you would want the entire course to know. So for instance, maybe while you are doing test two, which is the practical test, and then in the test question, I'm asking you to use Java, but in the lectures, you are only taught people. Or I leave it open-winded and say, use any database management system that you can think of. In the course itself, we are going to learn one, one, but keep in mind that there are multiple database management systems. So if I leave the questions open, this is where you can see clarifications to say, are we allowed to pick our own? Is it beneficial to do it this way and so on and so forth? But this is where you'd come, click add new topic, give that topic a discussion so let's say the question that you have is query on test two so you say then you type out the actual message i have a question regarding so on and so forth and then you'd type out your question in full and once you're done typing you'd say post to forum once you have it posted other people will be able to see the discussion topic and it's important to put a discussion topic so that everyone can know what is going on or where they can find certain information about a specific thing so under the discussion topic when you click on it you can respond and other students can also respond if i'm unavailable at the time if someone knows the answer they can also give an answer there so that's the announcements tab. Then you have my contact information. When we have a tutor, I will also add their contact information here. For Zoom meetings, it will always be the same link unless otherwise. So I've also added it here. Then we also have the course material section. So this is where I'll be giving uh, Anything else that I deem fit, maybe additional lecture slides, tutorial papers, 
uh, sample quizzes that you can do on your own that are not part of the CA. I'll be posting them under the course material section. Then this is where you'd see all 